All right, guys, bad news today. One of our shuttle vehicles has broke down. One of our client care people were in Jacksonville and it broke down while they were driving down the road, shut off. So we had it towed in and uh, we're gonna figure out what's going on with it. Let's get into it. So we've got a 2005 Toyota Prius. Um, again, shut off going down the road. It's doing something weird on the dash when I power it up. Let's see what it's doing here. So hit the power button. We've got an orange power button. Comes on, pops right back off again in our Prindle indicator. There's doing something weird there with these, just the boxes are coming up sometimes. Can't say as I've ever seen that before, um, but it is what it is. So I've got the scanner in it, done a, done a preliminary scan on it. Uh, we can't really get into much, but what we've gotten into is We've gotten uh, analog brake code, open circuit and ignition one, ignition two, and then we go down power source, ignition hold monitor, B2271, and history and current. Then we've got some theft deterrent issues. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down um, the ignition one, ignition two circuit, and the B2271. Let's look that B2271 up. Let's look that C1242 up. Let's see what they give us. All right, guys, excuse my mess up here. It is a disaster on top of my toolbox. All right, so we've got the car. We've got the car punched in. Uh, Toyota Prius, so I'm just going to go over here to trouble codes and let's go ahead and go, let's see what the C1242, let's go to that first, C1242, let's see what that is, all right, can barely even see these numbers. They're so small. There's a 1242, there's an 80 voltage. Voltage applied to IG2 terminal, but not applied to IG1 terminal for at least four seconds. So, all right, so we've got the ignition not getting power to it, it looks like. Vehicle's applied to one, but it's not getting power to IG1, it looks like. Uh, terminal not applied to IG. Two oh well, well, okay, so we don't have the detail code on the snap-on scanner on a, on a, on a um, Toyota tool that would give us this detail code, but I'm not gonna go pull that out for that. One, one of the ignition, um, size of the ignition is not getting power. Okay, let's go out of that. Let's go back. Let's look at this B code. B code was B2271. 271. All right, uh, hold ignition one relay actuation circuit or ignition two relay actuation circuit inside power source open or shorted. Okay, so same thing basically. Let's look over here. Power source ECU, AM1 fuse, AM2 fuse, or a wiring harness. Okay, so uh, AM1 fuse, AM2 fuse. Instrument panel, junction box assembly, engine room, junction box. All right, well, this is easier for me to get to. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, let's check all the fuses. Let's just check the fuse. Let's start with, let's start with the basics, guys. Let's just, um, let's just check fuses on this bad boy. All right, so we'll come into the fuse box here, get it open. So, all right. All right. All right, got test light. And of course we've got the maintainer hooked up on the battery. Every time I go to diagnostic RS, that's the first thing I do is get a maintainer on the battery. So, all right, let's go ahead. I like to use a test light whenever I'm testing fuses because that'll put a little load on it. And that little bit of load sometimes will, will show you, sometimes you'll use like a power probe or some type of a digital um, test light and it won't load the circuit. It'll come up as good. You'll see the light, but if you put a little load on it, it won't. So I just like using an old school incandescent 
test light and put a little load on it. So let's go ahead and check all the fuses here. And yeah, I could go straight to those fuses that it said to check or the fuse it said to check. And yes, that would be quicker. But I have been burnt many times in my life because I have uh, not checked all the fuses and there'd be a blown fuse that for some reason didn't show up correctly in the wiring diagram or whatever. So. Okay, and there's no missing fuses or anything in here. We got some here too, so. All right, let's do that again. Sorry guys, got sidetracked a little bit. All right. Oh, there's a blown fuse right there. All right, so we know that one's blown. That's probably for spares if we're wiggling around in there. No power in any of these. All right. Okay, so this guy's blown. All right, let's go ahead. Look up in here. That is... That's this guy right here, AM2. And that is exactly what this said am2 fuse so that fuse is blown all right so we need to figure out one we got to get here's my whenever i have a blown fuse here's what i'm going to do one is i'm going to hook up some uh an amp clamp to that and so that way i can get an amperage waveform on that circuit to see what's actually getting pulled on that circuit and another thing we need to know is what's on that circuit so um Let's get a uh, let's get an amp clamp hooked up. Let's get the scope hooked up to it. Get some get some information pulled up on the screen as far as wiring diagram for that fuse, and then we'll come back and, and we'll continue. So I've got the wiring diagram pulled up, and I've actually got a few of them pulled up. I kind of I want to show you how I do this, and everybody does things differently. I'll, I'll show you how I do my wiring diagrams, and. Uh, for me, it's just easier because if I've got to go back and forth between wiring diagrams, I can do it pretty quickly on here. So, um, but let's come on in. I'm going to show you what I got. So I went to the power distribution and found the fuse. So I see that that 15 amp fuse comes through, it goes through the ignition two relay. And remember, that was the, on the code, it said this relay wasn't getting, either this one or the ignition one wasn't getting power basically. So that was, that's why that code set. So. I can look here and go, okay, where does it go? Okay, so we come out of that fuse, and now we gotta make sure when we're looking at wiring diagrams, look closely. Don't, don't get caught up and just go real quick through stuff. So it's very easy to look at this fuse and go straight down and go, okay, it goes through this relay, and once this relay is activated, it's gonna come out, it's gonna go down, it's gonna come through here, and it's gonna come over, go into the, the fuse box behind the dash and going to come down and feed all this, okay? And then get caught up in going to this stuff. Don't do that. Let's look at this logically. Yes, it comes out, it goes down, it does exactly all that, right? But look at this fuse. This is a seven and a half amp fuse, okay? This is blowing a 15 amp fuse. So if it blew the 15 amp fuse, they would have blown the seven and a half amp fuse first, right? If it was over here. So it probably never would have got to this fuse. Now I want to tell you real quickly, I went in, I double checked this fuse just to be sure it had power or just, it doesn't, it doesn't have power because this fuse is blown. But I just went in to make sure this fuse is good. This fuse is good. But I knew that if any one of these things was shorted, that it would have blown this fuse before the 15. So I'm going to disregard this side of the equation. So all of this, I'm going to disregard right now. Let's come back over and let's look at this again, okay? We come down, we come out, all right? Look at this little guy. We come through on this connector and we come out and we go to engine controls, all right? So we need to find it, go to engine controls and look at that, okay? We also, if we look closely, we come out of this fuse and immediately come off and go this way. We come out, we go down, there's the power source ECU, which I do believe we had a code for, for this um, not having power to it. I think it was ignition hold or something on that one. So that makes sense there. All right, so we could have an issue here. We also, so let's go ahead and 
highlight that guy. So we could have an issue here. We also have this little guy coming off. It says engine controls. So we have engine controls and engine controls and power source ECU. So what I, what I do with, with these um, wiring diagrams is let's go over. I went to engine controls. So this is just normal engine controls. And if you see up here at the top how I've got my tabs open. So I've got a tab open on engine controls. I don't know what I've got in that tab, no telling. That's the, that's the original code that we had. I've got, I'm gonna show you this one in a minute because I went to that. And then this is the one we were just at. I like to open all my wiring diagrams on different tabs. That way all I gotta do is go tab to tab to tab if I'm looking back and forth. Just easier for me. So if we go over to engine controls, I've highlighted, here's our, here's our fuse, okay? Come down and I've highlighted these also. So we see, we come down, we go across, go across, we come up into this connector, go through the connector, go across, and there's our power source control ECU. So we knew about that already, all right? What else did we go to? All right, again, let's not get caught up in it too much. We got that one going out. We go across, go through the relay. We come across, we come into this connector. And in this connector, we can see these are all three connected together. So both of these blacks come out. These blacks come out and feed. Ignition coils, that's a filter. It means ignition coils and fuel injectors, okay? So these, are, these could be a potentially high draw items. So um, that's definitely something we're gonna look at. Now, that was it on that one that I could see. So then I went in, because it had two engine control um, uh, outs. So if we go back to that, we had engine control and we had engine control, okay? This engine control was outside of that JC2 there's the JC2, all right, but where's our other engine control? So I went to the engine control for the hybrid, and here's what I found there. I went over. Oh, I don't like it when it does that. All right. And I found, I saw it turned everything blue. Sorry about that. Uh, where are we at? Where were we at? Where are we at? Okay. Here's our AM2 fuse right here. Okay. So we come out of the AM2 fuse. We've got two spots, all right, go across. Let's take this bottom one first on the white wire. Let's follow it across. And I've got some other things highlighted on here, but we come across, we go into this connector. Okay, come down. Let's follow that one. And there's power source ECU again, okay? All right, so now let's go back to the other one that was coming out of it. All right, so we come out of it on this black wire. We come across, come up in, inverter water pump relay, okay? Come through that. That's behind left end of dash, okay? Come out of that, and there's our inverter water pump. Now. Let's go ahead and let's get a, so now we see all the things that AM2 powers, okay? So what does it power? What are, we, what are we going, what am I going for? Coils, injectors, could be hydro. Um, that inverter water pump uh, definitely could be an issue. It's a motor, hydro. I'm not going to go crazy and go after, um, power source ECU and all that kind of stuff. It's difficult to get to. So I've got my amp clamp. I'm gonna show you guys some, some stuff that I hook up. So first of all, I love this little kit because this allows me to replace the fuse with a circuit breaker. So I can go in, this has got some years on it. And instead of sitting there popping fuses. And yes, there are some great tools um, as far as putting a loop in here. Uh, AES Wave, AES Wave makes those. I'm sure other people do, but where they will just, you'll take the fuse out, 
plug the little loop in, put a fuse in the side of it, you can get your amp clamp around it. That is great uh, when you're trying to, to get a, um, a waveform, an amperage waveform on a fuse that's not blowing. The problem is that when you, this, this blew this fuse, so we're hoping it's going to continue to blow the fuse at least at some point, uh, if not right away. So I don't want to sit there and be putting fuses in it. So this is going to eliminate that. I'm going to go ahead and pull the fuse. Go ahead. The fuse is definitely blown. And then I am going to put this guy in there. So now that's plugged in. All right. And this is coming to this. All right. So I've got two things I'm going to put in. So that's a 15 amp fuse. I'm going to go a little lower than 15. Okay. I'll, I'll tell you why in a second. Uh, this is a buzzer. So when the fuse blows, when this doesn't have power going to it anymore on one side, it'll start buzzing. Good thing about this is that when, um, when you're not right by the fuse or you can't have this right by you and you're looking for something that's, that's popping a fuse, this thing will buzz and you can be anywhere around the car and you should be able to hear it. So yes, it's a 15 amp fuse. What this is is a 10 amp circuit breaker. So inside here is a 10 amp circuit breaker. I'm gonna go with 10 amps um, just because I don't know what's causing this to blow. A fuse is a pretty fast thing. It's gonna blow really quickly. A circuit breaker sometimes can take, you know, it might go a couple of seconds before it blows it. And that might be an issue for wiring. I just don't wanna take a chance. So I'm gonna use a 10 amp. And if it's just blowing this steadily and I gotta put a, five, a 15 in it, I might try it, but let's start with a 10. So got it in there. Circuit breaker is on, everything's good. So right now, if we key this car up, we should have power. So let me go do that. Before we do that, actually, let's get some other stuff hooked up because I don't know how long this is going to, I don't know how long this is going to take to pop. So let's get some things hooked up. All right. So scope's turned on. All right. I generally start with this screen just because I can see really easily when I'm connected. So we see channel six, just cause I, I had the purple on the uh, amp plant from a previous thing. Uh, I just wanna make sure, I, I always like to keep the, the coloring right. So this is hooked up. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on to 15 amp fuse. Uh, I'm gonna put it on 60 cause I don't know how much it's gonna pull. And then I'm gonna zero it. So that's zeroed. I'm gonna set that on here, purple. And I'm going to go to the 60 amp. So there's my amp clamp. So now my amp clamp is set up. 60 amps on here. And 60 amps on here. And I've zeroed it. Okay. I'm going to take that. Here's my, here's my wire. This is a wire into the fuse. This is a wire out of the fuse. Or vice versa. I'm going to go ahead and clamp it. Okay. Now I've got. Remember that loop I was talking about. That AES wave makes the loop for the fuse. Well that's just basically the same thing. It's a, it's a loop. And now I've got, I'm going to have whatever amperage is going through that, through that fuse. I got it. I got it right here. Remember this thing talked about, or said that, the, you know, the wiring diagram showed that we went through coil and we went to um, a fuel injector. So I'm going to get access to a coil and a fuel injector real quick. And then um, I'm going to, I just, once I get access to them, I'll show you what I'm plugging into and I'll tell you why I'm doing that. So give me just a second. I'm going to get access to that. And then, uh, be right back. All right, so I've got the air box pulled out of the way. I've got into number one coil. I'm in number, I'm in the red lead number one coil and the yellow lead into number one fuel injector. So I'm gonna just pop this back on there just to, very lightly just to make sure that the air, mass airflow reads something. All right, that should be good. Why am I getting those two things? Well, because that fuse powers all four injectors on all four coils with the with this scope i can see detail with that amp clamp um, that will show me what's drawing and if i can have how much it's drawing and I, might, I if i zoom in really good i can probably see some good voltage drop and i'll show you that if, if it if it comes true on this car i'll show you but with having a number one coil synced and a number one injector synced, I'm going to get a, 
I'm gonna have a timing reference so that let's just say a coil is bad. Let's say number three coil is bad, right? Well, if number three's coil is bad, then I'm gonna have number one injector. I think the firing order here is one, three, four, two. If it comes down to this, I'll look it up for sure, but let's say one, three, four, two. I'll have the, I can look at the waveform on the amp clamp and it's gonna show the amperage, but it's also gonna show some really fine detail that I can blow up into. And I should be able to see coils and injectors causing a voltage drop in there uh, or, uh, or I say a voltage drop, more of a draw. And I should be able to time the, um, I can look at the sink that I've got, count out, put some cursors up, look at it and see which coil or which fuel injector is drawing, drawing more. So uh, it's a really good thing on this scope. It's a really, really powerful, um, really powerful part of this scope. Uh, I think the other thing I want to get here, and my mind is going while I'm talking, is I want to get a, I'm going to get a power off of that, in, off of that fuse. So I'm just going to come in, get another lead, and I'm just going to go into it and get my, if I remember right, that's the side that had power on it. So there we go. Let's see if that's connected. We are connected and we do have voltage. Okay, cool. So now we've got the voltage on it. We've got the voltage on the fuse. We've got a sink on the uh, fuel injector, sink on the coil, and then the amp amperage on that fuse. So now I want to go over. I'm going to do a measure and deep record. 20 seconds should be plenty. So I'm just going to click it. That's going to start. It's a really good feature of this. So now I'm going to go in. I'm going to turn this where I can see it. And I'm going to go into the car. Let's go in here and let's start it up. All right. Let's see if it powers up first. All right, we got a ready light. We got it powered up. It started. It's running. Scope's going. And the engine's actually running right now. Got a little bit of a misfire there. Seems to be running okay right this second. All right, well. I'm gonna let it run until we, until something happens. And it just shut off. All right. All right. All right. Are you ready? All right. Let's come over here. All right. So I stopped it here. All right. And listen. Listen to the buzzer. You guys hear that? So that's the buzzer saying that this thing popped. So I'm going to turn that off. All right. Let's look and see what we got. Because this is... All right. All right. Let's do it right here. So you guys can get a good view of it. There we go. All right. Uh, I am going to turn off the yellow right now. Remember, our yellow is our is our fuel injector. Well, that thing just popped the fuse again. I'm gonna pop. I'm gonna leave that. I'm gonna leave that off. All right. Let's just leave that disconnected here. Okay. So here is our where this thing kind of went bad on us. We can see the amperage going up. Uh, let's blow this up for you. Let me, let me go ahead and bring this up. So where were we at? Here's 20 amps right here. Well, we can see that that amperage went up and up and up and up and up. Now look at how that amperage went. It started off, let's, let's it started off here and it just, then it got here and it just started ramping up. And when we got to, Right here is where we lost, that's where the fuse blew. And look, there's our, right here is our um, 
ignition coil, and I bet if we put our injector back up, yep, look, that's where we lost our injector at the same time. All right, so let's blow this up right here. I'm just going to kind of go all the way through here. Yeah, so I'm going to turn the, the green is the power on that, on that um, fuse. We'll come back to that in a minute. Let's turn that off. All right, I don't care about that blue. Get everything off the screen we can. Bring the cursors up to the top. All right. So we can see that that amperage went way up. We are at, well, let's go ahead and 30. zero a cursor and bring it down. Oh, sorry guys, happens sometimes. That thing went up to 28 and a half or so. Yep, 28 and a half amps. That's definitely going to pop. And look at that. And that's why I use that 10 amp because that thing took 28 amps to blow that to blow that circuit breaker. So, all right. Now, and it actually took a little longer than that because we still had some strikes down here. But okay, let's, let's turn this one. Oh no, it definitely killed it right there. All right. So let's blow this up even more. Let's see what we got here for what's happening here. Yep, so if we bring up the, so we can definitely see the ignition coil, okay. Or the, I'm sorry, the fuel injector, okay. That's not quite lined up exactly right there. Pretty close. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little more there. I just want to see that a little closer. Yeah, so that is, this looks like this would be maybe our ignition or our fuel injector. Let's bring the ignition up here. Uh, let's zoom out again. So let's go ahead and do this. All right, so we see, bring the cursors in. I want to bring the cursor over, and this is why I like to time this stuff. So there's our ignition right here. All right, so now let's zoom into that. Okay, so that actually is our fuel injector. If we see right here, this is our fuel injector right here. This is a fuel injector ramp on that. And this is our, looks like, it's going to be our coil, right? So that's our ignition coil, okay? That is is rising up. But let's look at how much is actually rising up. Let's look at both these things. So if we look, so because somebody might say, oh, well, that's the ignition coil causing the issue, right? But we've got four ignition coils in here. We've got all four injectors, and we've got all four ignition coils right now in here. Let's Let me show you that. We come right here. That's number one ignition strike right there. Ah, right th there. Number one ignition strike right there. Okay. So that's one, two, three, four, and then we go to one again. Okay. Or one, three, four, two, I'm sure. One, three, four, two. I'm assuming that. All right. And at the same time, let's look at, look where our, uh, in, our fuel injector is okay the little ramp here we can see that i'm going to blow that up Let's see if i just can't do just like yeah so look at this this where this starts and where this ends, this is our ramp. This is our fuel injector ramp right here. Okay, so why is that important? Okay, well, let's look and see how much that's actually drawing in amperage. Let's see how much the coil is drawing, and let's see how much a, a injector is drawing. So if we come down to our, bring our cursors down, 
and we say, all right, what we need to do is start at the zero at the bottom of this because this is where it's starting from, is here. It's starting at 20.834 right here, amps. If we bring this to here, the top of that ramp, that is 21.639, okay? So basically that's not even, that's, that's an amp. It's drawing an amp. That fuel injector is drawing one amp, okay? None of those injectors are spiking up. None of those injectors are going crazy and causing some kind of crazy amperage draw. It's not a fuel injector, guys. I know that it's way up here and it's sitting at 20 amps and it's doing that, okay, but it's not a fuel injector because it's only pulling if we take the difference between the bottom of the amperage pattern and where that fuel injector is, that's only one amp, let's just say, okay? So, and the reason we can tell that is because I know that that's the fuel injector because I've timed it that's why I put this, this on the fuel injector, because now I know that is, there's a fuel injector here, okay? This is the fuel injector pattern right here, and that's lined up with this perfectly. Let's look at the ignition now. Again, we could look at that and go, well, that thing is, is way up there, right? Those spikes are way up there. Okay, well, here's our ignition coil. Here's our ignition coil. This is the ignition coil ramp, okay? Well, how much is that pulling? Let's do this again. Down to the bottom, go to the top, okay? That's pulling 21, 20, it says 7.4 amps, okay, in that coil. Uh, 7.4 amps. I don't think that's the issue because although that seems a little high, I, I, I can't really tell you that I know that for a fact, but here's what I do know. There's four coils. All four coils are right there. All four coils are dead on the money even. None of them are causing, we don't have four coils that are bad causing this fuse to blow all at the same time. So this is gonna be normal for this car. But let me show you what's not normal. This starting off at roughly 20. if I go middle of the road here, still high for that 15 amp fuse at 12 amps. And then 12 amps, 12 amps, 12 amps, 12 amps, and then boom, starts to rise up. Let's go over here where it wasn't blowing the fuse and let's look at what those patterns look like over there. Here's the same pattern that we had, right? That's the same exact pattern that we had. Hit the cursors again, let's bring it down. Start there. There. 10 amps. So those, those coils are pulling a little bit more there, but not, you know, not causing this thing to just rise up because if they were causing it to rise up, every one of those spikes would be getting higher and higher and higher. And they're not. Well, actually, there's less over here. So what else is on this circuit? I want to tell you what I want to look at now is I want to look at the, I want to look at the power feed here. Let's look at the power feed and see what we can find there. Just want to see if we can't see anything unusual with this. No, this is not going to help us, I don't think. No. That's not helping us. All right, let's zoom out. Okay, so now what I want to do is this. So what else, so what's on this circuit? Fuel injectors are on the circuit. Ignition coils are on this circuit. The power ECU is on this circuit, um, and the the um, inverter water pump is on this circuit. Let's go look at the inverter water pump. Let's go look at that uh, draw. So I think if I remember right, this thing has a relay. Let's go to the relay. So here's our relay. 
Left side of the dash. $100. All right, in the junction block. I'm gonna see, let's get in here. And I should be able to, uh, maybe I can jump across this relay or do something here to get an amperage reading on that pump. So let's try, let's get to that and uh, give me just a second. All right, so I couldn't find the relay or I, I did a little bit of looking for the relay and uh, a little more difficult than I would want it to be. So what I did find was though, I can get to the inverter water pump. Uh, this is actually to disconnect the inverter water pump. So clearly Toyota knows there's an issue. You could disconnect that and uh, drive the car, I guess. I don't know how long I want to drive it with no cooling on the inverter. But so this feeds the inverter water pump. So I've just got my amp clamp around it. So let's come over here. Here's our, here's our, uh, I took the buzzer out because uh, you know, when it goes, when it buzzes, it's, it gets annoying. So, so I just got this to plug into here. All right, so I'm gonna start the scope had it up on there a second ago but you'll see so here we go so right now we are pulling about three amps or so actually it looks like it's holding steady there might have to turn the key on I guess in this thing nope here we go we're rising a little bit don't worry about that that's just it rescaling it took the zero off so just Definitely starting to rise here. Something turned off for a second and came back on again. Not worried about these little spikes. Look at here, look at this thing go. Seven amps. Something happened there, okay. It's getting up there now. 1920 and it just popped so clearly the problem is in this water pump so the the only thing that we're on right now is the inverter water pump and that inverter water pump is started off really low but then as it sat there and I didn't hear the pump run or anything I mean clearly it was running down there but um, you can see that it started ramping up. I don't know what this is here. It doesn't really bother me because it just kept ramping up, ramping up, ramping up until it got to 20 amps or so and, and it popped the circuit breaker. So the issue is the inverter water pump. So definitely the inverter pump is bad on this vehicle. And the thing that you can take from this video is, I hope, is that we can determine if you put some don't just go straight into if, if we just put that amp clamp around that fuse and we had no no sinks on anything so we didn't have the fuel injector we didn't have the ignition coil we just had the amp clamp well we would definitely see it going up but we would have no reference point so having those reference points of when the, the ignition coil fire we were able to see every single ignition coil in that pattern clearly seven to ten amps draw looks like it's it's good on those right the fuel injector one amp is good on that right so um, that just that just shows you that instead of just going with one channel on an amp clamp get your channels hooked up to this thing you got a four channel scope okay get your amp clamp on get your two get your sinks on as many things as you possibly can it's really good to have a sink on a coil or a fuel injector because we can get a firing cycle then. And with a firing cycle, we can time a lot of things out. And then from there, you can, you can look at the pattern in a way that you can see when things are happening and determining what's going on. Now, in this particular case, what we did was we were able to rule out some things, not, not, not condemn anything, right? But by ruling out all of that, the only things we really had left were, were modules, you know, power module, ECU, or that pump, I mean, and that pump is clearly a, a, a big draw item, it's a pump. So luckily we were able to get on a connector here, but if we weren't able to, we could have got down to the connector on the pump or I would have found that relay. So uh, guys, I hope this, guy, this helps you out with a, a fuse that's blowing instead of guessing at what's causing it to blow, determining what's causing it to blow, going to it, finding it, and, and actually knowing that's the problem. All right guys, hope you liked the video. If you did, 
like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so you get notified every time we release a video. We'll see you in the next one.